Okay, Monday morning, let's start the week with a royal update. Here's TMS royal expert Patricia Treble, who joins us as always with the very latest. Patricia, good morning to you, and we're going to start with championship weekend at Wimbledon. What a spectacle, and we saw Princess uh, Catherine, Kate, front and center there at center court. Well, and this is, this is kind of what's fun about it, because on most public engagements, royal public engagements where William and Kate go to, it's William as heir to the throne. He's the center of attention. But for Wimbledon, it's her because she is the patron of the, and I always get this right, the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Association, which hosts Wimbledon. So she was the one pre presenting the trophies this weekend, and it was the ladies and gentlemen's finals. And so trophies to the victors and then consoling the the losers and you saw on Saturday her giving a big hug to Ons Jabeur who was the Tunisian who again lost um, her time will come we were just talking about that I I, I think she's going to be she's going to be someone to keep an eye on oh yeah for sure yeah. for sure uh, well speaking of Princess Kate she's keeping an eye on the three kids these days because school's out <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, all three of them like all of our kids are quite busy yeah. exactly busy and there at the Wimbledon yeah. as you can see Oh my goodness, uh, Charlotte and George. I mean, what a, what a thing. Charlotte's never been to Wimbledon. Uh, George was there last year for the first time and they get front row seats in the Royal Box and what a match. I mean, Novak Djokovic, Carlos Alcarez. I mean, they were so into it. You can tell they love tennis. Their parents play, they play. And apparently Kate mentioned that Louis, who was not there, a little too young, um, he's practicing to be a ball boy. Really? Oh. So we might see him because it's something that when Queen Camilla was there, she mentioned that when she was young, she was a ball girl at one of the local clubs mm -hmm. that she took part. So there you go. He just may need to keep his uh, facial expressions under control. Right. Exactly. He's no, got knowing his penchant for facial expressions, <laughs> I, I can hardly wait to see this. <laughs> well, because <Yes>. uh, <laughs> we saw them. We saw them earlier because they went to they went to an air tattoo. This is the biggest in the world, and it was kind of the you know. This is their treat. So all three of them, they're clambering over aircraft and everything like that. And you could see they were having so much fun. I mean, every kid, I, I remember going to an air tattoo when I was young. I think every kid should go there. And every parent a little dreads it a little bit, but the kids have fun. <laughs> all right, crawling all over aircraft at Wimbledon. Uh, best uh, summer break ever, right? Yeah, pretty oh, good. <laughs> pretty good darn. start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get to Harry and Meghan. Yep. Next, because uh, their Netflix series, it received a nomination uh, this past uh, week, Patricia, yep. but maybe not the one they were expecting or yeah. hoping for. Good news, bad news. So this is the nomination season for TV shows, and they really wanted an Emmy. Um, they did not get the Emmy. That's the bad news. The good news, though, is they did get a nomination. It was for the Hollywood Critics Association. Um, so this kind of, I think, one step forward, one step back, um, because the Emmys really are the creme de la creme for this sort of thing. Um, and I think they, they must have really wanted one. Um, and it just shows the struggle they're, they're facing right now. Mm. Okay. Uh, last week we saw President Biden was yes. visiting uh, the king. He was at Windsor Castle. And uh, some speculation about whether he broke <sighs> royal protocol. And this, this is my bet noir. So whatever you see. So he was, you know, touching the king's back, touching the shoulder, you know, I think an elbow at one point. And everyone was like, all of a sudden, breach of royal protocol. And every time you see that, I always say to people, take a deep breath. Calm down. It is almost certainly not a breach of royal protocol because there's no protocol for it. And sure enough, the royal uh, officials came out and they said basically no muss, no fuss. Um, King's a more relaxed person than his late mother. And there was no, trust me, there was no royal protocol to breach. You simply are polite and you're, and that's, the, that's the, what you do. And those two really know each other. And you could see that they were really relaxed with each other and getting along well. So yeah, no breach of royal protocol no matter what people say. All right, plenty of photo ops there. And speaking of, we yeah. got a recent photo op. We haven't really seen Harry and Meghan out in public too much uh, lately, but they were spotted in Montecito at a farmer's market. Yeah, so, so uh, Meghan was spotted there with her beagle, Gus. Um, and she was buying some flowers and stuff like that. And it's kind of a, a paparazzi hangout because a lot, of the, a lot of the celebrities who live in Montecito are there. Um, a tiny little bit of a fuss because apparently dogs are not allowed in the yeah. farmer's market. Um, but she was buying, she was buying uh, flowers, tasting some honey and stuff like that. Um, and kind of just a, 
I guess, enjoying the summer uh, because summer in California is pretty darn nice, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. All right. Finally, you have been uh, crunching the numbers <laughs> when it comes to the sovereign grant. We talked I, about this a couple of weeks exactly. ago, right? This is the so, audit of royal finance. Exactly. So this is the financial statement. So I'm a little bit of a geek like this. Um, so thank you for indulging. So uh, sovereign grant pays for the monarch's official duties. And so the staff, the maintenance of the of the palaces and stuff like that. And this was actually an audit by the National Audit Office of Britain. I didn't actually know it existed. And they did a full in-depth analysis. There were two tiny little points that were interesting. And the first was that Queen Camilla is not going to take the annuity that is normally goes to the spouse of a monarch. So Prince Philip had an annuity to pay for his staff, because of course there's a lot of added duties as the spouse of a monarch. It was about $620,000, so it's not insignificant. She's not going to take it this year. Times are tough in Britain, and so they're going to simply get by with a sovereign grant for everything. And the other thing was that they were looking at how much of the sovereign grant, and it's about $240 million, it's not, not chump change, how much of it went to renovations, because they're doing a massive reno of Buckingham Palace, and these palaces are expensive, 50% goes to renovation costs. Um, so it kind of just shows you how much, and then 25% goes to staff costs. It just shows you when people say, oh, that's their salary. No, they, don't, they do not get a salary. They have private funds. Um, it's expensive to be head of state, no matter who is head of state. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to leave it there for now. Patricia, thank you. You're more than welcome.